Well, the long wait's over. The ATF finally stood before the Supreme Court to give account of its unconstitutional overreach. The case is Garland versus Cargill, and it's a challenge to the ATF's bump stock ban. So is that good news? Did we get an actual smackdown to the ATF? What is a bump stock? Does it matter if it's banned? Well, if you listened along to oral arguments like we did, you may not be feeling too great about it because it wasn't clear necessarily that we're headed for a great big huge win. That's not necessarily true. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the answer to all of those questions here in just a minute. But first, let's go over how we got here and how we got to an ATF that is out of control and unchecked so far by any of the branches of government except for the Supreme Court, and we do hope that will change soon. All right, so this case has been a long time in coming because the ATF has been on a rampage against your Second Amendment rights for years. In fact, it all started with a ban on bump stocks. Bomb stocks are a mechanical device that lets an inexperienced shooter accelerate his rate of fire. But I want to emphasize here that does not make it a machine gun. Nothing in the federal machine gun statute says anything about the rate of fire. But what the ATF does is they see something that lets you shoot faster and they try to lump it in to machine guns. They try to twist the statutory language to, in, to make it include every single device that lets a shooter fire faster. But that's not what the statute means, that's not what it says, and they can't do that. But they've been doing it. And I have to say here, they did that, this did not start with President Biden. This started, what I'm talking about today, this started with President Trump, sadly. It was one of the last things he did before he left the Oval Office. He directed the ATF, which is an executive agency responsible to the president, he directed them to ban bump stocks. So they started rolling it out. And then Everything that we've seen from the ATF since then has been doubling down on the part of the Biden administration on what Trump started. And don't worry about bump stock. We're getting rid of it where it'll be at. I mean, you don't have to complicate the bill by adding another two paragraphs. We're getting rid of it. I'll do that myself. You were the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them. We do a little trolling. It's called We Do a Little Trolling. But y'all, this is not just a Biden problem. It's not just a Trump problem. This is a Republican problem. President Trump opened the door. Then John Cornyn opened it wide and ran through it. And now you have President Biden and the ATF doubling down on the groundwork that was put in place by Republicans so that now not only do we have a bump stock ban, we have a pistol brace ban. We have a ban on home-built firearms. We have a forced reset trigger ban. And we're looking right now, we are preparing to fight against their latest idea, which is banning the private sale of firearms, or at least giving the ATF a blank check to do that. It's argued that it was out of fear for what else we might get if we don't give them this little thing. But if you give a mouse a cookie, y'all know how that goes. It works with politicians as well. This is why we at the National Association for Gun Rights are a no-compromise organization because we're not going to take what the politicians tell us we have to settle for, politicians of either party. We are going to tell them what the Second Amendment says, and we're going to insist that they follow it. All right, so that brings us to this case, Garland versus Cargill. Uh, this is one of several bump stock cases that have been filed since the bump stock ban was passed by the ATF. And this is the only one to actually make it to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court agree to hear it. So I say that to say that sometimes getting the Supreme Court to grant cert or agree to rehear a lower court's ruling, um, sometimes that's a long process. And just because the Supreme Court says no two or three times or four or five sometimes, to the same issue as it comes before them in case after case doesn't mean they're not ultimately going to weigh in. And I say that because we have a case right now pending at the Supreme Court. We've asked for cert um, in the Illinois assault weapons ban case. We are one of a couple of cases there on that issue. If the Supreme Court says no, that doesn't mean it's the end of the day because the Supreme Court said no on many cases that were about the bump stock before we got to cargo. But we did get to Cargill, and we just had oral arguments. So let's talk a little bit about the background of this case. Basically, what we have with this case is the question of whether the agency went beyond the statutory language and wrote the law instead of merely interpreting and enforcing the law. 
Their argument is that they just interpreted the law. But remember what we said earlier. They're basically trying to twist the definitions of what the statute says so that they can loop in every single attachment and device that allows a shooter to accelerate the rate of fire. And I have here in front of me, I'm going to read this to you here, um, the definition, the federal definition of machine gun. The term machine gun means any weapon which shoots, is designed to shoot, or can be readily restored to shoot, automatically, more than one shot, without manual reloading, by a single function of the trigger. Now, if you find yourself getting lost in the weeds already, you're not alone because the Supreme Court justices seemed pretty lost in the weeds as well. Um, this is very technical stuff. Um, you have to understand how the gun functions. You have to understand how the trigger functions within the gun. And not only that, but the ATF's lawyer, a very good attorney, was doing his level best to throw sand in the eyes of the justices and obscure the issue um, and get everyone as lost as possible in the minutia uh, and technicalities of how guns operate. Now, I say that they are going beyond what the statute allows, but I also want to emphasize that they know that. They are very, very clear that that's what's happening here. They even said it in their opening brief to the Supreme Court. Before the rulemaking, ATF's relevant regulations had simply repeated the statutory definition of the term machine gun. All right, so what you have there, you have their definition their own definition that they're enforcing is literally what Congress said in the law, okay? That is as it should be, okay? But then they go on to say this. The final rule amended those regulations to reaffirm the agency's view that single function of the trigger means a single pull of the trigger and analogous motions. That is not what the statute says. When they're adding to it, in order to loop in more gun accessories, I think it's pretty clear that they're going beyond what Congress authorized, and I hope, and I think that that was clear to the justices, at least at least to most of them. Um, there is a question at which you're wondering how many of them are willing to see that. Because it doesn't really matter how you feel about bump stocks. It doesn't matter if you like them, if you think they're silly, if you think they're an illegitimate workaround. It doesn't matter. What matters is what Congress told the ATF they could do. And ATF has decided to push the envelope as far as they're allowed to go. And that is why this case ended up before the Supreme Court. Now, your National Association for Gun Rights filed a legal brief in this case as well. We're not one of the actual parties, but we are allowed to file what's called an amicus brief. Am amicus means friend of the court. Basically, it means we have a dog in this fight, right? What the Supreme Court does here is actually going to affect our members. And for us, it's going to affect our members more than perhaps other cases that deal with the Second Amendment will. And I want to explain why that is. So I mentioned earlier that the ATF has also been banning forced reset triggers, right? They're using the exact same redefinition, I should say, of machine gun to do that. And they're following the exact same logic. They've redefined it multiple times in order to get away with what they're doing, in order to at least create, if you will, some sort of statutory justification for in creating a ban, imposing a ban, and then enforcing the ban with criminal penalties, no less. So, and that's a serious thing, especially when you're dealing with an agency regulation, which Congress never authorized. So we filed a lawsuit to protect our members from the forced reset trigger ban that the ATF followed the bump stock ban with. Again, the forced rate reset trigger enables you to fire faster, but it doesn't do so by firing more than one shot per single function of the trigger. So it doesn't meet the statutory definition of machine gun. So... We filed an amicus brief to say, yeah, they're doing this to us too. It's a different accessory, the exact same issue. They're basing it on uh, language that Congress never passed. That is not in federal law. They're going beyond, basically, the parameters that Congress set, and they're violating the Second Amendment in the process. Um, I have here in front of me our legal brief, the one that we filed, um, and I actually want to read to you from the introduction because this really sums up what I feel that this case is about. This case is fundamentally about who has the authority to define what is and what is not a federal crime. James Madison warned that the accumulation of all powers, legislative, executive, and judiciary, in the same hands, may justly be pronounced the very definition of tyranny. Consistent with Madison's admonition, today it is axiomatic that federal crimes are defined by Congress. 
not the courts and not administrative agencies. The statutory text controls. And that's what this case is about. It's not about what the nature of the gun accessory is. It's about whether or not the ATF has the permission to do it, whether or not they can make a law, let alone one with criminal penalties, and let alone one that has Second Amendment implications. The answer to all of that is no. And we are very, very hopeful that at least the Supreme Court was able to wade through the technical weeds on the definition of a trigger and recognize that that is the case. So, oral arguments were earlier this week. Um, we are expecting, I mean, the Supreme Court doesn't have a deadline, right? But the end of the term is going to be somewhere around in June. And we would expect a ruling by then. So, we will keep you posted when, as soon as we know something. If you'd like to know more about why this case is so important and the implications for the for the forced reset trigger and the members of the National Association for Gun Rights who own them, you can check out that video here. We have a great overview for you on that. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel for updates, and we will see you next time.